the original members of Rare, the guys who did Banjo Kazooie, uh-huh. the original devs and a lot of the real masterminds behind the company have come together as a group, Playtonic Games. They recently started the Kickstarter for their new game, Ukulele, which is Banjo Kazooie in basically every possible way they could do it without getting sued. But from the looks of things, it's looking like the kind of game that everyone, including myself, has wanted. I know, like, some people are a little testy about it because it is Banjo-Kazooie again, but not with Banjo-Kazooie. But Rare isn't doing anything good with Banjo-Kazooie anymore, so I'm kind of okay with that. Yeah. Also, it's just looking interesting. So uh, look up ukulele, Y-O-O-K-A dash L-A-Y-L-E-E. It's a pun on the instrument. And it's looking pretty interesting. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that this game does really well because it's basically needs to tell the developers, hey, you know all those platformer games you acting like don't sell? Look at this game. It's selling awesome. Fuck all of you. You need to start making platformers again. It did insanely well on the Kickstarter in an, in an hour. It passed its first goal within an hour. And I've I've never played Banjo Kazooie before because I grew up with a PlayStation, but like even saying that, I'm really excited for this game. It looks really good. I love a good platformer. I mean, it, it's very it's accessible, I think, to most people, but it has always a good combination of simplicity but difficulty. I've always had a soft spot for really colorful games, and this game just absolutely looks beautiful, and that's kind of what's mostly drawing me towards it, since I have no like nostalgic connections to the idea. I wonder what happened with Rare. I mean, they were making so many good games, and they just kind of gave up. Well, they yeah. got bought by Microsoft, and... That, that's the end of the story. Nobody liked working for Microsoft. And Microsoft claimed that they were able to do whatever they want, but then why did, were then why did all those other, you know, veteran rare people leave and say that they weren't able to do what they wanted? They wanted to do Banjo 3. That never happened. Then they when, did Nuts and Bolts instead, which then is Then they got shitty. to do Banjo 3, and then they were like, well, you know, walking sucks, so let's put cars in it. And know. you have three weeks to finish it. Good luck. Turns out the lights. <laughs> <laughs> with no power <laughs> mega game go uh, do we have some of the bandicos together just stick them together with glue <laughs> but it's just for another game altogether do it I- I'm, not, I'm not like the biggest banjo kazooie fan but i can at least respect the characters enough i played the first and second they didn't really grab me maybe if i play them now i'll like them but they did make conquerors bad for a day and i did and also donkey kong country 64 i really did like some of the uh rareware platformers you know also the country games so i'm really hoping that this will be like the revival of more platforming games because you know mario's cool and all but it's like there's him and who else yeah for whatever reason i just think a lot of the developers are under the impression that children don't play playstations or xboxes which couldn't be further from the truth um plus also you're completely missing with you know both a casual and nostalgic gamer type that would play something like that but i don't know i i can't think for like marketers do marketers are kind of backwards that way for some reason older developers just haven't been wanting to revive the older franchise lately that's why we've been getting so many spiritual successors like there's ukulele there's that castlevania one there's mighty number nine for mega man i think this really opens the door for a lot of other things that could have spiritual successors like i'm i'm thinking just off the top of my head like maybe we can get like a crash bandicoot kind of thing since we haven't seen crash in years and last time we saw him it blew major chunk i know a lot of the what you said were like japanese games which we won't even get into why japanese game markets are fucking up right now but there's a lot of those platformers and a lot of those character types that just gave up on and if, if as you said like there's needs to be more metrovania games those are super popular there needs to be more platforming games that are super popular, but for whatever reason, the fathers of those particular creations just don't care anymore. I don't know. Maybe they just see the success of mainstream games, like most all the first-person shooters, Assassin's Creed, etc., and say, hey, we should, or like even mobile games, like that's apparently what Konami is going to be doing. They see that, and they want to go towards that, even though what they're already doing is going to be quite successful. I think what's going to happen, and we're kind of seeing it already, is that the the cost of games has, has increased dramatically. So, like, a lot of these games that they're trying to create the, for today's markets are costing too much. So the ones that are making all these profits are these uh, platformer-based indie games, ones that are a little bit more simple in design. So I think it's going to force a lot of people to actually start going back to that, which is good, because it stops us from seeing all the same game over and over again like we are now. I think the bubble's about to burst. And I'm looking forward to that. Maybe this is like some weird way where the 90s is coming back. Like, hey, remember Banjo-Kazooie? Well, here's not them. Mega Man? Well, here's not him. 
Castlevania. Well, well here's not that. There's well, guitar harmonica. It's a <laughs> wolf guitar and a parrot. Harmonica. <laughs> you mean harmonica hero? Yep. No, no, no. H- harmonica paragon or something. Yep. Oh. Harmonica cleric. Well, keep in mind, all trends go in cycles. Like, if you even look at music, anything that was popular in the 70s tends to come back around, like, came back around around the 90s, 90s, it's been 20 years, and now it's back. It goes about 20, 30-year cycles, so it's it's the time for it to be back. Right. At least in music, it will still get people to make the things that are not considered popular, even if, say, the radio's not going to play it. Video games, it always turns into... Oh, I guess we're just gonna stop making platformers then, and then nobody does it, and it's it makes no sense to me. And then like an indie developer will do, it, and everybody's like, "Why can't the bigger companies do that?" And then the bigger companies are like, "Well, you don't buy them." Games are moving to mobile phones. Bullshit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like the the PS4 is sold at twenty million units. I don't see the idea that most people play games on their phones now. I mean, I don't know. I know hardly any people whose main source of video games is a phone. I mean, there's a lot of I mean, there's a lot of money in mobile gaming, but I why not do both? <laughs> you know, yeah, it doesn't take much work to make mobile games. You could have a department make mobile based games and a department making console based games. And most developers could have a couple people doing mobile games. It takes maybe one person to make a mobile game. A lot of the most popular games was made by a guy. <laughs> yeah, like I don't know what Sega is doing on consoles lately, like other than Sonic Boom. but um. <laughs> They ported Choo Choo Rocket to mobile. It's like one of the only mobile games I've ever bought. And it was, it's so good. Like, it's just, it's a perfect mobile game. I love, I love just bringing it out and playing it every once in a while when I'm bored. And they're still making console games, quality aside. They're still making them. So I think that that's a good example. I think part of it is companies are looking towards the money. And for some reason, they think the money is in a lot of microtransactions, you know, things like what goes on with Candy Crush. I follow a podcast called Geeks and Beats, and they recently found out out of maybe 100 people or so, maybe three will actually spend extra money to keep playing. But one person out of those three will spend money to play it consistently. So I'm guessing they have no idea actually where the money is coming in. Or they're just underestimating the intelligence of people in general. Welcome to the corporate yeah, the tribe style. Exploit all the uh, people who are easily addicted. Yeah. Huh. Video games. Video games. <laughs> we need more video games like they did in the 90s. That's well, yeah. another thing. Like in the 90s, there were all sorts of properties. In, well, in the 80s too. Like all sorts of properties. and things. Like you didn't really think it would stick and last forever. I mean... Be honest, in the 80s, if you were born in the 80s, would you honestly think, oh yeah, the Ninja Turtles, that's going to last forever? <laughs> yeah, good point. Also, I just don't understand this need of, of sending out an unfinished game with low replay value and then having you pay to get extra stuff to give it replay value. That was never a problem back then. Like, you could make a game you could play multiple times and, and enjoy it. Why is it so hard to do that now? Yeah, I'm playing Bayonetta 2 right now. I'm loving every second of it. And one thing I'm noticing as I'm playing through the game is there's, like, so many nooks and crannies you can look in to find secret things so you can get stuff like new costumes, new weapons, even probably some concept art, too. That's one great way to give a game replay value. Just give it a lot of places to look. Maybe you can find, like, another battle, or maybe you'll find an item to use to make battles more fun. I think that that's one of the best ways to give a game the ability to play through it more than once. Let's just make it a great game. I plan on playing Bayonetta 2 until I die. <laughs> and the nice thing at all, I mean, Platinum's known to have a couple DLCs, but they've never been, like, huge into putting a bunch of DLCs out. Same with From. You know, they have maybe, they'll release something new for a Soul series. Maybe, like, one little DLC thing, but more often than not, the meat of everything in that game and the replay value comes from the main game. It's not like, oh, you didn't know, now from this update, you can gain three more levels to your character, like Destiny does. Yeah, at the very least, from when they have someone with a vision, like Miyazaki, who did Dark Souls, Demon Souls, Bloodborne. It's that case, Dark Souls 2, he was just a supervisor, and that one ended up a lot more. Here's three DLCs that still don't finish the story. And here's an additional proper expansion that actually kind of gives a resolution. Oh, you need to actually buy it separately. Hmm. That being said, I think that DLC can very easily be done right. I think Nintendo's kind of done that. Like with Mario Kart, you get a ton of content on Mario Kart 8 default, and then you get even more content for a good value. Like it's what, $12 for 
eight new tracks, I think that's a great value. And that's kind of the best way to do DLC right. Make it reasonably priced, make sure it's worth the money, and then more people will be willing to buy. I think, come to think of it, I've hardly bought any DLC. I can't think of any other than Mario Kart. And I plan on buying any future Super Smash Brothers DLC, but other than that, like, that's the only one I bought because it's totally, I think it's completely worth the money. Yep, for some reason, Nintendo really sucks at anything having to do with internet, yet they seem to be doing amazingly well with DLC. Yeah, Nintendo's good at a lot of things. It's just there's so many things that's holding them back that they're bad at, and none of them has to do with the quality of the games or their ideas or anything. I think we're just going to live in an era where they're never not going to do DLC as much as I kind of just want a game to be complete within itself because it's it's too easy of money. More often than not, there's a lot of the games out there that you play that just don't feel like a full experience until you start getting those DLC stuff, which punishes anyone who buys it when it first comes out. And it lowers interest in anyone replaying the thing because you're having to, oh yeah, you spent 60 bucks on this game, spend another 25 to make it playable. Yeah, <laughs> that's why I like Mario Kart 8 so much. It feels like a complete game on its own, but it does what DLC should do. It, it expands on something that's already a good value. It should take a finished product and, for lack of a better term, finish it even more. Just give you more to do in this game that's already worth every cent on its own. What I think they should do more often, and that, that every studio should do this, along with any kind of paid DLC they have, they need to give away free DLCs. Yeah. Just a couple, you know, if it's an extra character you can play as, if it's an extra set of armor you can get, just something you can reward the players for thinking, hey, you bought my game, thanks, here's something you can have for free. Then you'll get people interested in paying for that sort of stuff more often. Nintendo actually did that with uh, Mario Kart 8, 200cc. Yeah. yeah. Totally free. So Mario Kart 8 is just the best example of DLC, it seems. <laughs> Mario Kart 8 is better than all your games. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mario Kart 8 is a damn fine game, though. I mean, me personally, I have my issues with 200cc, but I'm just glad that I didn't have to pay for that because it was just free. Like, it's the tracks just don't feel like they're made to go that yeah, fast. Yeah, some, some tracks work perfectly fine with 200cc, but, like, it's totally obvious that, like, this track was not designed with this idea in mind. Like, 200cc was totally a thing that came up at the last second, because when they had the DLC, they had the first pack and the second one. That's all we knew. It wasn't until they put it in a direct, they're like, hey, guys, 200cc! which was cool and free, but it was an extra thing that they came up with. And I was glad, and I was okay with that, because it was free. Unlike the other things that I actually paid for, I actually wanted those, and they ended up being the better value in the end. So if you're trying to think of how to do DLC for a platformer, here's the thought. Try to make challenge maps. Have those sent out for free, and just have people, you know, you could always have some kind of contest or something. You know, you could, you could just, you can do things that'll attract hardcore players to it, and you'll still have interest to people that are everyday players. And the reason why they're not doing platformers is because they can't think of proper DLC. That would be bullshit. But I'm trying to just rewrite it back to our original subject. <laughs> <laughs> what was our original subject? Uh, ukulele. 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 <laughs> yeah. Get ukulele when it comes out. Or support it right now. Wow, it's 15th round draft pick of the <laughs> <laughs> Oakland Raiders in 86. Ukulele. <laughs> ukulele. <laughs> hey, kids. <laughs> Remember me? Crickets, crickets. What do you play, Mr. Ukulele? A xylophone. I play Gushers. <laughs> <laughs> I play Splatoon. Go long, Billy. Wow, it's 40-time rejected candidate for the NFL Cowboys. Derek. The NFL Cowboys. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even get a proper name. Son, do you even watch sports? Splatoon for the Wii U. Go away, Billy. <laughs> Go anyway. long, Billy. Out of my house. Anyway, Surge, sir, it's a Splatoon commercial. <laughs> I think we've hit all the points there we could possibly hit. Yeah.